your body has a range of biological cycles that happen very predictably. Some cycles many times a day, some once every 24 hours, and some take weeks or even an entire year to complete and then start again. So just how does your body manage to automatically keep track of all these cycles? In this episode of Psych Boost, the Cajun Rhythms on the role of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous psych gamers. Right, first off, let's define two words that sound complicated, but really aren't. Firstly, endogenous pacemakers. Well, endo is Greek for inside, and genus means producing. So an endogenous pacemaker is something inside us that produces the ability to keep the time. And you can think of this as an internal body clock. Now, all clocks drift out of time every once in a while and need to be reset. That's where the exogenous zeitgeber comes in. The exo in exogenous means outside, so an outside producing, and zeitgeber is German for time giver. An exogenous zeitgeber is an environmental cue from the outside world that keeps our internal body clock to time. And another word for this process is entrainment. In this video, we need to consider both the endogenous pacemaker and any exogenous zeitgebers in relation to the circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm. Okay, last bit of etymology for this video. Circadian rhythm. Circa is Latin for about, and diem is Latin for day. So a circadian rhythm is a biological rhythm that lasts around 24 hours. And while the sleep-wake cycle is the most obvious, among others, we also have a circadian rhythm for releasing hormones and varying our body temperature. But let's focus on the sleep-wake cycle. Every 24 hours, we have a period of sleep and a period of wakefulness. And you may argue, well, I go to bed when the clock shows it's late or when it's dark, and I wake up when the alarm goes off or the sun comes up. Well, they're certainly cues, so exogenous psychabers. Well, we can see in situations like jet lag, the conflict between those exogenous psychabers and the internal body clock. Our endogenous pacemaker is telling us that it's far past our bedtime and that we need sleep while the outside world is still light and the time is mid-afternoon. It may take a couple of days for the exogenous psychabers to adjust or entrain our endogenous pacemaker. The endogenous pacemaker for the sleep-wake cycle is the suprachiasmic nucleus, or SCN. It's also known as the master clock. This is found in the hypothalamus within the limbic system, just next to a point on the optic nerves where they cross, called the optic chiasm. The SCN is sensitive to the amount and type of light received from the eyes. The SCN is connected to the pineal gland, which is also in the limbic system. This produces melatonin, a hormone that produces a sleep response. So light detected by the SCN suppresses the production of melatonin in the pineal gland, making you feel less sleepy. This would mean that the main exogenous sight gap for the sleep-wake cycle is the amount of light received from the eyes. However, researchers suggested social cues like when we time our meals or exercise or when others go to bed or environmental clues like clocks also work as exogenous sight gapers. Research evidence. Research evidence for the existence of a free-running circadian endogenous pacemaker for the sleep-wake cycle is provided by Seath. Free-running, by the way, means the endogenous biological rhythm will maintain itself without entrainment, without external cues. Seath conducted a number of studies in which he stayed for extended periods in a cave. He was completely isolated from natural light or clocks. In 1972, he spent 179 days, about six months in a cave in Texas, without access to the regularly timed exogenous zeitgebers of the sun or clocks. Seath's body clock extended beyond the normal 24-hour cycle to around 25 hours, but he still maintained a regular sleep-wake pattern, showing the free-running circadian exogenous zeitgeber in action. But due to this slightly extended cycle, he reported feeling less time had passed than he expected. A criticism of this and other studies with similar methodologies that showed similar results is that participants had control over the artificial lights. Some psychologists have suggested that the participants in these studies were altering their biological clock with their use of the artificial lights. More recent work by Siesler, who controlled for this variable, suggests there might be no drift, and the endogenous pacemaker is precise capable of an almost perfect 24-hour rhythm. Evidence that light is a dominant exogenous sight gaber is strong. Better in 2011 showed that when exposed to strong blue light, 27 office workers in the experimental group would match their circadian rhythms with the office lighting. 
compared to a control group of 27 office workers with normal office lighting, whose rhythm matched the natural light of dawn. What about evidence that the SCN is the biological structure, is the endogenous pacemaker responsible for the circadian rhythm in the sleep-wake cycle? This is provided by Ralph. He destroyed the SCN of hamsters with a tau mutation. This gives them a circadian rhythm of just 20 hours. He replaced it with the SCN of normal hamsters. After this procedure, the mutant hamsters had a normal circadian rhythm of 24 hours. This also worked in reverse. Normal hamsters given the SCN from mutant hamsters would gain a 20 hour sleep-wake cycle. This clearly demonstrates the SCN is the endogenous pacemaker in the sleep-wake cycle. Evaluations. As a disruption to sleep patterns can lead to increased anxiety and also to decreased alertness and decreased vigilance, understanding how the sleep-wake cycle is affected by exogenous side gabers can help psychologists develop treatments for jet lag, to improve performance of athletes who travel, and to help shift workers be more productive and alert. This means this area of psychology has potential implications for the wider economy. And understanding other circadian rhythms, like the circadian blood pressure rhythm, helps with timing drug treatments, benefiting health services like the NHS. Knowing the psychological effects of exposure to light, particularly blue light, has implications as technology changes and we're exposed to more blue light at night and from personal devices and new LED road lighting. This provides people with advice on how to maintain a healthy sleep pattern. It does seem that light is a main exogenous side gaber, and social cues are less effective at resetting the biological clock. Research on a man blind from birth by Miles showed that even with social cues, the blind man had a 24.9 hour circadian rhythm, meaning his sleep was out of synchronization with the rest of society. There is an evolutionary explanation for the day-night cycle of humans and other animals specialized for daytime activity. Because we're not specialized for nighttime activity, it makes no sense for us to move around in the dark. Nocturnal animals, however, like rats, who are active at night, have a circadian pacemaker where it's shifted 12 hours so their wakefulness is at night. Bonus fact. This area of research is called chronobiology, and the presence of biological rhythms is common, with even creatures as small as cyanobacteria having a circadian rhythm. But the circadian rhythm can be turned off if not needed. Some species like Arctic reindeer lose their circadian rhythm in the Arctic summer, when the sun never sets. And migrating birds can turn those off for weeks, so they can go without sleep to reach their destination. I hope you found this Psychobreeze video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychobreeze grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.